we can use our trainer as a support for plow pose. And I have Isabel from Australia to thank for this idea. Bringing your head as close to the trainer as you can. So the top of your head is touching the crossbar and getting comfy on the ground. Now, if you've never done plow before, check in with your neck and how healthy your neck is. And if you have any contraindications or precautions to take with your neck, plow might not be the posture for you. And do make sure that once you get towards plow or into plow that you do not turn your head, put any pressure into your head. Do not twist your neck in any way, but keep looking straight up. If you'd like to try, we'll go step by step, bringing our hands under our hips and squeezing our knees in towards our belly, using that core, firing up the core. Now, I'm not going to look towards you and you'll have to watch and then listen, but not watch at the same time that you're trying this. Bringing your knees up towards your face, you can bring your feet back onto the trainer and relax your legs on top of the trainer. Meanwhile, you can bring your hands together, possibly, you may, you're invited to, behind, on the ground, or you can bring your hands to your hips with the heels of your hands right underneath your pelvis to help your pelvis lift up, looking straight up between your legs. And you may relax the weight of your legs here on the trainer. They could be a little bit wider. They could be a little bit more narrow, but find something comfy to hold your legs. And if the top of your head is pressing into your trainer, you might want to roll down and move a little bit further away. And let it be comfortable. Our chin is not coming toward our chest, but we might notice that our chest is coming toward our chin, taking our time. We could even move the trainer far enough back that just your feet rested on it instead. And bring your knees toward your face, bend your knees, take your hands towards the earth, press down through your hands, come into a nice ball, and you may lift your head up or you may keep it down. But tucking your chin is a good idea to stabilize your neck, rolling down one vertebra at a time, lowering to your feet, and resting for a moment. And the counter pose to this posture is fish. You can do a version of fish on the trainer, or you could do it on the ground. But I will show it to you today on the trainer. So we'll lift ourselves up and move back towards our trainer and get that trainer to support our chest. Lifting our chest up, rolling our shoulders back. Now with fish, we would tuck our hands down here and we would draw our chin back. And then we would look up between our eyebrows, but drawing the chin back first so the back of the neck doesn't get creases in it, but it stays really long. Our head stays long away. And if that feels like your head is a little too heavy there, because in fish we rest our head on the ground, use your hand one at a time, one hand down under your hips so your shoulder can roll back, one hand behind your head, one hand under your hips, and one hand behind your head taking your time. You might even Roll the elbow in and bring the tips of your finger to the back of your skull so you can feel your long neck in the back and in the front, opening your chest, switching sides. Feels so lovely. I pray that if you've been doing plow that you enjoy this version and if you've never done plow before that you're extremely careful, really check in with your body throughout the whole thing. And if you have any neck or shoulder issues, you might want to skip that one. What's, it's always risk versus reward, right? There's lots of other things to get that reward without the risk. And just ask me, I'd be happy to share some options with you. Take care.